Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to you with a weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Dior Cruise Wallet on Chain in the metallic gunmetal leather with the champagne gold hardware. Uh, all right, so grab a coffee, grab a tea, let's start work, let's go to work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Miko Gurley 99 Neiman's investing in fashion file. Thoughts? Interesting how department stores are turning to pre-lab nowadays. Also, I remember that you were experimenting with a subscription luxury bag service. Did you ever do a follow-up on that? All right, so these are awesome, awesome questions, and I did write down some notes because I have been getting a few messages on Instagram, so just give me a second. Okay, so uh, Fashion File teaming up with Neiman's. The question on everyone's mind is if the prices will go up. Fashion File has stated that no, the prices will not go up. The CEO, Sarah, she actually did a... Um, she did a live Q&A on Instagram and she was addressing some of the concerns that people were having. Uh, she was saying, no, the prices are definitely not going to go up. They have a lot of exciting things that are coming up that are going to be unfolding very, very soon. So I personally think it's awesome. I think it's awesome because in a sense, it's kind of like a major department store is backing the pre-love market and it's giving you even more peace of mind when it comes to authenticity because Neiman's isn't going to risk its reputation when it comes to replicas or anything like that. Now you have even more peace of mind because you have a major, major player that is backing up Fashion File. So like I said, I think it's awesome. I think it's great, you know, and Fashion File does have a set of standards that, um, that they follow when it comes to selling and buying and things like that. And now they have, um, they have a completely different set of standards that they have to adhere to. So I think it's great all the way around. It's a win-win for everybody. Uh, another question that people wanted to know is if, uh, Fashion File will have counters at Neiman's. Uh, she stated that no, they're not gonna have counters at Neiman's. Can you use your Neiman's card at Fashion File? No, that was an, another thing that also ended up um, coming up. But uh, to be honest with you, I mean, the pre-love market is such a lucrative business. It is such a lucrative business and it wasn't where it was 25 years ago or anything like that. A lot more people are, tur uh, are turning to it and I feel that Neiman's is really giving a spotlight because you have heard of other department stores that have um, you know, some pre-love goods within, uh, within their, within their stores and things like that. But I think that this is on a whole different level and I am super, super excited to see what else they're going to offer. Now, one of the things that I think, because, um, you know, they didn't say this is what's going to happen. They just kind of said, Hey, we've, you know, we've come together. We have a partnership. Uh, one of the things that I think this is just speculation. I think that maybe if you end up selling to Fashion File, you can either consign with them or they can buy out your item, right? So I think that uh, moving forward, if you end up selling to them, maybe another option would be that you can end up going for a Neiman's gift card. Like I said, this is just speculation. And maybe that gift card will be even more if you end up going that route instead of um, instead of the uh, buyout or instead of consigning. Because when you consign, you end up getting a little bit more money. Sometimes you end up getting more money than when uh, they buy out the item from you. So who knows, maybe you'll be able to get a gift card to Neiman's. So you sell your old bag, you get a brand new one at Neiman's. It's a win-win for everybody. It's a win for Neiman's, it's a win for Fashion File, and it's a win for you. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Do you think um, it's going to be successful? Are there any other concerns that you might have? Let us know in the comment section down below. Um, you know, But I'm very happy to hear that she said that the prices are going to stay the same because I think that's, that's, the, I think that's a major thing because when you have another company that comes into it, now it's the third party, you know, so that third party has to have, has to make their money. They have to, um, you know, what's the point of investing? They have to have um, some kind of stake in it, you know? So that's why I think a lot of people were wondering, oh, the prices are definitely gonna go up, but they said absolutely not. So um, I really hope that that, um, you know, that that's the case. Now, as far as your second question, the subscription service, um, you know, I love the idea of a subscription service. I think it's great, you know, that way you can end up trying out different bags. Um, the subscription service that I tried out, they actually ended up specializing on hard to find items or uh, runway pieces, which I think is even better because a lot of these runway, runway pieces, you can't find them in the boutique or anything like that. So I thought that that was great. Um, one of the things that I wish that they offered when it, came, uh, when it came to subscription services would be that they would allow you to buy that item. Like if you, if you rented it 
for, uh, or if you borrowed it for a month and you loved it, you're like, you know what? I have to have this bag. It would be really great if there was a way for you to be able to buy that bag with, you know, the money that you had spent renting it or what have you going into that amount, you know, so it's kind of like a proration. I think that that would be great. Um, but when it comes to subscription services, like I said, I really like the idea. I think it's awesome. But for me and for myself, I just can't enjoy them. I get so incredibly nervous. I feel like something like I, I feel like something's going to happen to it. And they all say, you know what, have fun with it. Have fun with it. Don't worry about it. I'm not like that because if the item is not mine, I just, I automatically put it in like the biggest bubble because I don't want anything to happen to it. And can you imagine if something did end up happening to it and I wasn't feeling the bag, now I'm stuck with a bag that I don't really like that I have to pay for it, you know? So I don't like that whole thing. I wanna be able to own something. If I ruin it, I ruin it. It's my own, it's not It's not somebody else's or anything like that. So I would also like to hear you guys' thoughts on this. What do you think about subscription services? Uh, do you like them? Have you used them? Have you had great success with them? And if you did use them, did anything ever happen to the bag? And if something did happen, what ended up happening with that? That's a lot of questions. That's a lot of questions back in your guys' uh, court. But anyways, great, great questions. Hopefully I was able to answer it and I would love to hear your guys' feedback. Next question from Rita Johnson. What do you think about an all black handbag collection? Do you think that they're all different or too similar? Does it have to have color to count? Is there such a thing as too many black bags? This is an awesome question. All right, so what do I think about an all black handbag collection? I am all about it. Yes, 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 a million times yes. Because a black handbag is effortless. It goes with everything and anything. You're not limited to the type of print, to the type of colors that you can wear with it. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. I feel like the possibilities are endless when it comes to a black handbag, you know? And you can, it can be chic, it can be edgy, it can be classic. I just, I, I love, I love black handbags, definitely. And do I think that they're all different or too similar? I think that they're all different. And even though they might have similar shades, it's the details that set the bags apart. It's the details that make those, um, that make that bag kind of stand out, you know, and speak for itself. Because if you wanna go for a bag that has a little bit more organization, or if maybe you wanna go for a bag that's a little bit more, um, that's a little bit more versatile or if you want to go for a crossbody bag or what have you i feel like each one has something different that it offers that the other one doesn't have and each one like i said kind of um speaks for itself even though it is a black bag kind of like people that say i see two black shoes i don't see two black shoes i see manolo and i see chew you know what i mean so it's it's all a matter of personal preference but um no i think that each bag is different they might be they might have similar shades they might have similar similarities but at the end of the day they each have a detail that sets them apart from uh, from another black bag and does it have to have color to count absolutely not I mean um, I'm not as I'm not as scared of color as I used to be but I always feel I always feel more comfortable when it comes to a black bag like I said before because it's effortless to me it's kind of like a no-brainer and colored bags are, I mean, they're gorgeous. They add that beautiful pop to your outfit. And um, some people just really like to have the colored bags because that makes their heart sing. And I think that's awesome. And I know uh, quite a few people that don't have a single black bag within their collection. They want to have reds, yellows, oranges, and things like that. And I think that's great because they make it work. But for myself, I am very, um, I'm very, uh, not shy, but uh, I'm a little bit more apprehensive of color. I'm, I kind of, uh, <laughs> I feel like I kind of crawl to it where other people might end up running towards the color, you know? So no, I don't think you have to have a colored handbag for it to count as a collection. As I've said in other videos, there are no have tos, there are no shoulds when it comes to fashion, when it comes to collections. I've heard people say that you have to have a minimum of 10 handbags for it to count as a collection. What? No, that's crazy talk. You could have two, you could have three, you could have four. There, there's no limit, I mean, there's no number, there's no magic number that says you have to have this many for it to be a collection. Absolutely not. I don't see it that way, call me crazy, but that's just me. 
Um, so is there such a thing as too many black bags? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I don't think there's anything wrong with having an all an all colored handbag collection. I don't think there's anything wrong with having an all black handbag collection because ultimately it's about whatever makes our heart sing. And um, I just, I mean, I can't deny a, a black bag. I think that, I think that they're awesome, you know. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Are you more of a colored handbag person? Are you more of a black handbag person? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. But I will have to say, Rita, if you want all black bags, you go for it. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Sarah Santana. Hopefully I said that correctly. So I'm ready to get my first luxury handbag and I'm anxious about going into a store. I was thinking about just making my purchase online, but my husband says and wants me to have the boutique experience. What would be some tips for a first time buyer? I'm afraid to have a bad experience and discourage me from luxury goods for good. Uh, all right, so I'm really, really excited for you. And whether it's your first time or your hundredth time in the boutique, I like to do a little bit of research beforehand so I have a little bit more information on that item. I like to have an idea as to what it is that I'm looking to to add to my collection. Now when that time comes of you going into the boutique, if you end up going and for some reason it doesn't feel right to you, you don't feel comfortable, it's okay to just browse until you decide on the item that you want to go for. Don't feel pressured. Don't feel that because you went in there uh, today you have to get something or don't think that because I've been here an hour or two now I have to buy something. Absolutely not. Don't feel pressured pressured by any means whatsoever. Also, ask questions. If asking those questions makes you feel better, if it gives you peace of mind, ask them. Now, I know that what we said last week, some sales, uh, some sales associates are different from others. Uh, some are very thorough. Some will let you know how, um, you know, how how delicate the leather is, or how this item ends up wearing as time goes by, and things like that, which is always awesome. You know, so ask those questions so that way you can get answers to what it is that you want to know, because you're going to be the one that's going to be using the bag, not them, not Sally Sue. Not Billy Bob, nobody else, you're going to be the one using it. So it has to work out for you and for your lifestyle. Now on that same note, always be respectful of the sales associate. However, if the sales associate doesn't have time for you, if they don't want to be helpful, it's okay to ask for another one. I have done that multiple times. Some people think that I'm being a complete B, that I'm being such a diva. Sorry, that's not what it's about. It's not about that. And like I said, it's always about being respectful. But if someone isn't going to give me the time of day, I'm going to find someone who does want to help me out, who does want to give me that time of day, you know? So it's okay to ask for... Um it's okay to ask for someone else. And don't feel intimidated by sales associates. When I first started out with luxury goods, I was terrified of going into the boutiques. I used to get super, super nervous. And um, that's why like doing research beforehand always ended up helping me out. But there were times, I'm not saying that this is always the case. There are times that I walked into the boutique and I'm like, oh, I really like this bag. And the sales associate was like, oh my gosh, it's limited edition. Um, we only have that bag, you have to get it after that. That we're not going to be able to get it. I can't guarantee it. And they kind of, they kind of give you this song and dance that you have to get this bag because of that. And it's almost like they add a lot more pressure to the whole experience. I am not all about that. I'm not all about that. And when that happens, I get very uncomfortable. And um, nine times out of 10, I end up walking away. Or I should say 10 out of 10 times I end up walking away. So don't feel intimidated. Don't feel pressure that you have to buy something or that, um, you know, it's going to be gone if you don't get it right then and there. Sometimes that is the case. There are limited items, but I feel like for the most part, I mean, they, they're not going to have just one bag in one color and one silhouette in the entire world, you know, so just kind of take that into consideration as well. Hopefully I didn't scare you. I just wanted to give you a few pointers and a few tips of some of the things that I experienced. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about you and it's about you getting the bag and feeling extremely happy about the item that you walk out of that boutique with, you know? So don't let anybody poop on your party. And I hope you have a blast. I'm really excited for you. Let us know uh, the item that you end up picking up. But again, I hope you have a wonderful time. Fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Rachel Cruz. I'm a member of the group we like to call Bag Chat Family. And recently, one of our members asked a question regarding the Louis Vuitton Dauphine in reverse monogram 
and she sold her reverse Pouchette Matisse to purchase the Dauphine. Some of our members in the group commented that they are thinking of selling the Pouchette Matisse so that they can get the Dauphine bag. Do you think that the famous and still hard to get Pouchette Matisse is losing its fame? What are your thoughts about it? Um, all right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture. Actually, I'll put the picture of the Louis Vuitton Dauphine um, side by side with the Pouchette Matisse. So I'll insert that right now. They're pretty similar, right? Okay. Uh, do you think that the famous and still hard to get Pichette Matisse is losing its fame? I don't think so. It's still a very highly sought after bag, but the Dauphine is the new kid on the block. It's the new collection on the block. And I definitely feel that this bag is going to give the Pichette Matisse a run for its money. Um, you know, you have a few different uh, sizes to choose from or a couple different sizes to choose from. It's an entire line. And the fact that they offer, you know, a little bit of a difference when it comes to a silhouette always ends up making it even that much more popular because if you don't like uh, this size, if you don't like this uh, color combination, you can go for something different. You're just not stuck with one, you know, one type of, uh, of color. You're not stuck with one size or anything like that. So, um, like I said, it is the new kid on the block and it's definitely going to give the Pichette Matisse a run for its money. I think it's a little bit more of an elevated look as well. Uh, so, I mean, I've heard a lot of people have been purchasing this bag and so far they're absolutely loving it. So that's always great to hear. Um, but I think that when it comes to the Pouchette Matisse, maybe people are kind of like myself. If you were on your second or third one, you don't want to have to deal with that anymore. Or maybe people are um, wanting to sell the Pouchette Matisse before they experience any type of quality issues or anything like that. That could be a thing. Um, you know, because I still, I still love the Pouchette Matisse, as I've said before. I think it's a beautiful bag. It offers so incredibly much. Unfortunately, it does have a bad reputation. Um, you know, and hopefully everything ends up getting um, resolved and it ends up staying, uh, you know, in the fashion house. Uh, but maybe, you know, people are just sick and tired of hearing so many issues that they just want to, they want a fresh new face and the Dauphine is definitely that face. So I think it's going to be even more popular as time goes by um, and only time will tell. But um, I think it is a beautiful bag. I think both of them are beautiful, but do I think that the Matisse or the Pochette Matisse is losing its fame? I don't think so. I could be wrong, you know, especially because I end up hearing so many things about other bags that people are just like, I'm over the Matisse. I can't find it. I keep saying Matisse. I'm over the Pochette Matisse. I can't find it or it has too many issues. I'm on my third or fourth one and, you know, I get it. I get it. I gave up after my second one. The third time is not a charm for this girl, you know, so <laughs> I totally get it. But um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if uh, if they end up incorporating more, um, you know, more pieces with uh, the Dauphine, uh, the Dauphine line or what have you. So I would love to know, what do you guys think? Do you think that the Pouchette Matisse is losing its fame? Do you think that the Dauphine is going to take the crown away from that bag? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question. I think it's Jamie's Jam. Hopefully I didn't butcher it. If I did, I'm sorry. Um, I like how you have looked into a few other fashion houses like Pauline. You inspired me to purchase from them as well. Woohoo! Have you ever thought about delving into anything from Tiffany or Cartier in their leather lines? I have a Tiffany card holder and it is the softest yet durable little item and I can't deny the color. Was wondering if you have ever thought about them. I don't see a lot of info online about either of their leather items. Um, all right. So with Tiffany and Cartier, I actually do have a Tiffany um, small leather good. It is this guy. I found it um, a couple of weeks ago when I was cleaning my room. I cannot tell you the last time that I used it, but it is a little coin pouch. It is super cute. It has changed color uh, and it does have the beautiful little um, silver you know, leather on the interior. So it's a cute little small leather good. But yes, I have been tempted to go for um, a Cartier piece as well as a Tiffany. And I love the color. I love the color. And you're right. It is so incredibly soft. And it's really great to hear that it is durable because I did um, I did wonder that when I went into the boutique and I felt um, the their wallets, I felt that they were maybe a little too soft. But like I said, it's really great to hear that yours is uh, is holding up and it is durable they have a train case. If I can find a picture of it, if I can't include it, you know, on the screen, I will put it on the description box below. It 
it is so incredibly beautiful but they also have great prices when it comes to the to the leather pieces so i think that's awesome so yes a card holder or a wallet i would definitely like to start off with one of those because this i mean this is patent leather um it's not going to wear the same way that the other type of leather is going to wear the pebbled leather so um either way i think they have so many beautiful items not just their jewelry because their jewelry i mean is just phenomenal right um all right now cartier I love, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. I love the new bag that they recently released. Um, I will insert a picture of that bad boy right now. I know we talked about it in a previous Minx Monday. It's available in two different sizes. The smallest size retails for 2020 here in the States, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I love it. I think it is so beautiful. It has a little bit of organization um, and it's also a little bit more versatile. I think it's great. I, like I said, some people aren't feeling it. They're like, I look at it. It looks like a box. I'm expecting to see like a ring or a bracelet or earrings or some kind of jewelry, you know, which I totally get because it has the exact exact same detail that the that the um what's it called that the jewelry boxes have but I really like this new um, this new line, and I have always been intrigued by Cartier because they have had leather goods for a long time, and I've seen some of the older pieces on the pre-love market. I don't see too many of them, um, but I remember when we talked about this last, someone uh, there was a few people in the comment section that had said that they had a few uh, Cartier leather pieces, and they've had them for years, and they've been wearing you know awesome. They haven't had any issues with um, you know with pop stitches or wear and tear or anything like that. So that's also great great to hear. Uh, but I really would like to, to see more information out there just in case, you know, I like to have my, I like to do my research beforehand, but, uh, that Tiffany or not that Tiffany, the, uh, the Cartier, uh, handbag and a Tiffany wallet or a card holder. Definitely. Definitely. I would love to add either one of those to my collection. If you guys do have either one of these, let us know in the comment section down below. Do you recommend them? or just more information on wear and tear. The more information, the better. But fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Lux CC. Do you own the Zippy Boy coin purse with the three gussets? I'm thinking of getting one and my concern are the gusset sides. How many cards can you fit in each area without affecting the leather part of the gussets? Um, all right, so yes, I do have the Chanel Ozip coin purse in the boy version. This is in the gray lambskin leather with the ruthenium hardware. And uh, as many of you know, it does have the three compartments that look like that and it really depends on the thickness of the cards that you're trying to put in here. So if you're talking about the same thickness of credit cards, I wouldn't do any more than maybe six or seven per compartment. So anywhere from 18 to 21 cards total. And uh, you can also end up fitting cash in between those, even if you do have uh, those thicker cards. If you do have thinner cards amongst those cards, um, you can definitely get away with carrying a lot more. Because like I've said before, when it comes to this wallet, you can end up going from a full-size wallet into this no problem because I feel that these compartments are very, very generous. Uh, so as you can see on the gussets there, I haven't experienced any wear. Um, there are no indentations or anything like that. In my opinion, I feel that it has been wearing fabulously. I will also have to say that um, usually I like to, let me show you guys really quickly. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. Do you see how there's that little dip in between each little gusset? What I like to do, I like to put the cards on either side of that little um, of that little dip. That way it kind of helps to keep its shape and I'm not necessarily putting too much pressure on this gusset here. And if I end up having, like for example, if you end up putting maybe 10 to 15 cards per compartment and because the credit cards are so, uh, sometimes it might be a little bit longer or cards in general might be longer, it might end up causing it to have a little bit of an indentation on the gusset. And that's when I feel that as time goes by, if you continue to do that, um, you might end up experiencing a little bit more wear and tear or the leather might end up um, wearing a little bit faster. So like I said, I like to go on either side of that, uh, of that little dip and it ends up working out nicely. And I have been able to, uh, like I said previously, I have been able to roll up like cash. Sometimes I have to fold it up a few times and still put it in between those cards and it still doesn't make it too, too, uh, too bulky. But I'm also not trying to fit anywhere from like 10 to 15 bills or anything like that. So um, even though I do feel that this, um, this card holder, this is my all time favorite, my all time favorite card holder style because I think that it holds an insane amount of, um, of items. Uh, it is very generous, but it also depends upon how much you're trying to carry. So again, the thickness of the cards, or if you feel that maybe you want to give 
one of these compartments a little bit more cash that also has something to do with it but in general i think that it wears out really really nicely and um you know it's just uh, for me it's very important to try to go on either side of that gusset just to help it to keep its shape so fantastic question and hope i was able to help and the last question from kimmy lodgefield hopefully i said that correctly I often find myself grabbing the same bags, often ignoring the ones I absolutely still love. Do you have a method for rotating your handbags so that you can fully enjoy your collection? Um, all right, so usually when it comes to handbag rotation, I do take a few things into consideration, such as weather. So if it's raining, I know to go for a bag that is that doesn't have delicate leather or that doesn't have vaquetta, or if I'm going here or there, if I might need a bigger bag, like a workhorse or maybe um, a little bit more organization. But if neither of those two things end up coming into play, uh, and if I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, what bag should I go for? Call me crazy. All right, call me crazy, but I do like to reference my Instagram because my Instagram is a great way for me to like kind of catalog the bags that I've been using. And then I kind of scroll through. I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't used this bag in a while. I haven't used that bag. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, and rock that bag for the day or what have you. So that to me really ends up helping out more than you know. And I'm kind of like you too, because I do have, I feel like I have like a top five bags that I constantly, constantly constantly gravitate towards and it doesn't mean that I don't love all of the bags that I own but it's just like those five it's like it's like it's it's just easy you know it's easy and um, I think there's times when I'm like okay I need to give this bag a break because because I've been using it to death you know so that also um, is part of the rotation but yeah that's what I like to do. I like to go onto my Instagram or if maybe I'm going for a pop of color, it really depends. Uh, I don't think that there's really any formula that I have. It depends on the weather, it depends upon what I'm doing or sometimes if I want a pop of color. Uh, but I do, I definitely do like to go onto my Instagram and just kind of see what bags I have been using using and haven't been using and, uh, and go from there. So I would love to know, how do you guys rotate your handbags? Do you have a system in place? How is that working out for you? Let us know. In the comment section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for Makes Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Uh, for this week's lineup, you guys will see me one other time. But again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.